Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd So today inshallah we'll continue with um, the laws of inheritance Alright Last week we had a, a big class Today I, I don't people think we should be sharing the estate or what but This is just to bring the awareness Alright so we mentioned we give what a basic definition of any what is actually inheritance, the transfer of ownership upon death, upon demise onto specific individuals and specific any portions. And we spoke about the estate, what comprises of the estate and the transfer of ownership. Alright. So we'll continue um, with regards to ownership, right? We mentioned whatever that deceased owned in his lifetime, straight until his last breath, it would constitute the estate. If it constitutes the estate, then the, the rights of all of the heirs are connected to that estate. And no one can take from that estate until it is distributed to the, um, the legal heirs. So then we have many questions people people normally ask people normally ask right the deceased in his lifetime he set aside this amount of money that amount of money for a specific purpose understand that doesn't matter any wealth in which the deceased kept aside in his lifetime for a specific cause a specific individual and he dies before actually giving it to that individual or executing that cause and it remains with that person, it is part of the estate. It is part of the estate. And we have a few examples, and you could ask to, and you could add, probably add to it. For example, the deceased, he was what? Saving money to perform Hajj. So if he was saving money to perform Hajj and didn't actually perform the Hajj, that money that he was kept aside, whether it be in a separate bank account or below the mattress or a separate, a specific area, that amount, that money is what part of the estate. It is not for the heirs to say, you know what, this is the money that what? That pa or whoever or dad was keeping to go for hajj, so we'll take it and go and make hajj on his behalf. No. Unless he made a wasiyah, a will. Right? Instructing in the performance of hajj. But if he didn't do that, all he did is set aside money. Yes, with the intent of making hajj. He didn't perform the hajj. Then that remains in what? In his property. It remains in his ownership. That being the case, it would be part of the estate. Now it would be what? Connected to the hak of the rights of what? All of these heirs. Money kept aside to be donated to the poor and needy. Okay, he, every, he used to put money in this what? In this box, in this drawer, and he would give what? Charity every month or every week or whatever. Now, khalas, he died. So that whatever money that is in that drawer, in that box, or whatever, it now is part of the estate. It cannot say, okay, no, just give it to the poor, because that's what he used to do in his lifetime. No. It becomes part of the estate. Money kept aside for the building of a mosque, or the building of an Islamic institute, or a hospital, or whatever. So the, the person, what, he passes away without actually handing over that money, without actually giving that money without actually donating that money that becomes part of the estate it's not for any heirs to take that money and, and give it and give it away no that is part of the estate and no single heir and he has rights in it over the estate no it belongs to everybody and it must be distributed any accordingly money kept aside to build a house or to buy understand to build a house or to buy what a car for the son or the daughter. So listen what listen what the what the um, the person did. He built a house for one son, right? And now he's saving money to build for the other. He is saving money to build for the other. He bought a vehicle for one. Now he is saving money to what? To buy for the other, the other son. In that process, now he dies. So that money, even though his intent, and everyone knows his intent. His intent is to what? Buy a vehicle for the other son. Or, you need, or build a house for the other son. That becomes part of the estate. Why? Because he didn't give it to the son and say, no, he didn't give it. It remained in his ownership. 
in his possession hence it will be part of the estate and it would not it would not go to that what that person he intended whether it be son or daughter money kept Right, we'll, dis we'll discuss about the will, inshallah. What was the question? Yeah, he asked a question, but inshallah, we'll discuss that in a later on, inshallah. He asked about the will, how the will, and he ties into all of this here. Right, that, um, that will be explained in the upcoming arm. Um, slides or sessions even money kept aside for zakah right this is the money kept aside for zakah right so he hasn't paid that zakah as yet and that person died so that money would no would not go for zakah right that money would be part of the the estate all right many kept money kept what aside for what the son or the daughter upon reaching a specific age right keeping money Right, so when she reaches what 18 years, or when she reaches 20 years, he reaches whatever age, right? So that now is part of the estate, right? Unless it's a trust in the sense that what the money belongs, what he gives the money to what the daughter, he gives the money to the son, right? And the son and the daughter they only have access to it at what the age of 18 or 20, 21. That's different, right? Why? Because you already transferred the ownership of that. But in most cases, what they do, they keep the parents would keep the money and then what? Make it what? Accessible or transfer it to the child upon 18 years or upon 20 years or whatever. So if that being the case, if the ownership hasn't been transferred, right, to the son or the daughter, and it remains in the ownership of the testator, the deceased, in his lifetime, then it would constitute the estate. It would not um, it would not belong to that son or that daughter. It, it would be I'm part of the estate. So whenever you open like I say a green bank loan for them, um, where you just deposit the money into when they don't have access to it as yet. Right, so the question here, what about if a parent opens with a, a joint bank account with a child? Whether it be a minor or a child is mature, it doesn't matter. And they deposit money, right? So this whole thing over here, it what? That depositing of the money, right? Is it what? Your money or what? You deposit in it for them. You mean what? You transfer it to them. It belongs to them. That is the whole thing. Yeah, this, this, not, this is not only with an inheritance. This has to do with zakah. This has to do with any qurbani. This has to do with hajj. All monetary obligation with what? This would need to be what determined. Right? And the same we spoke about the husband and wife. They have a bank and they have a bank account. They share a joint account. Right? So a joint account doesn't necessarily mean what ownership. And if it means ownership, then what? It doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean what 50-50. That needs to be determined, right? And I think this is the question. We had many questions um, last class, right? Your name in your bank account, but are you actually owner of the account? Are you a what? A part-time owner? Not a part-time owner, but your own portion of the account, right? If so, then what is your portion? What is the ratio? 50-50, 40-60? Or khalas, it could be that what? The husband owned the entire account and nothing belongs to the wife but you know she has privilege she is privileged to what to spend as she like as she likes right she has that privilege but does what she owned the account right even though the bank statement mentioned okay joint account mr and mrs you would have to know right where the ownership is and if there's what ownership then to what ratio what what proportion so similarly here with the children if you are, they have the child name in the account, right? For what, what reason? You know what? He's a joint owner of the account. And when you deposit, right? Are you depositing what? For you or for him? Right? That needs to be what? Determined. So if you deposit it for them, you not use it for the account. You deposit it for them. But you know, they sell young. So they don't have access to it. Right, so over here, you deposit what? Is your money, you want to give it to them. This is as a difference. I am depositing this money in my account, right, for my son, and he would have access to it when he has 18 years. I'm depositing the money, that money in my account 
for my son when he reaches 18 years. That is my money. Right? That is my money. That is not my son's money. If I'm depositing what the money in the account for my son, and he would have access to it when reach, upon any, reaching 18 years, okay, that's his. So it depends on, okay, like what? We have this example over here, jewelry, right? The mother has jewelry, right? And she wants to pass on that jewelry to the daughter. The daughter going to go, she's going to get married, right? So she said, listen, this jewelry is, when you're going to get married, is yours. And she intends to give her it, right? And that is known, right? But until now, it is still in the possession of the mother, right? She hasn't passed it on yet, even though she has the intent. And the daughter knows and everyone knows that when she's going to get married, she would get this. This is hers. But until now, it is still in the the ownership and the possession of the mother. So, right, that is hers and it's connected to what Zaka and everything over here, right? So, if she were to die, then that is part of the estate. But if she already what transferred it, right, transferred it to the, um, to the daughter, then what? It, it, become, it becomes hers, right? And if the mother were to die, then that would not be part of the estate. Why? Because it's already left her what? Her ownership. Alright, yesterday we had a, um, a person came, alright, he has a property, he has a property that he wants to give his two grandchildren, alright, but right now in that property, he has his two sons, right, his two sons living in the property, but he doesn't want to give the property to his two sons, he said, I'll give them, I've given them plenty thing in their lifetime already. I don't want to give them anything again. Right? But I don't want to kick them out of the house. Right? So he wants to give it to what? The two grandchildren in the condition that what? They don't evict his two sons. So how are you going to do that? If you give it to what? The grand becomes theirs. Right? The most you could do is request. Right? Request them not to what? Evict the two sons. Right? If I listen, once you become the owner of something that is yours, right? I can't sell you my vehicle or give you my vehicle and say, you know what? I don't want you picking up Zaid. Right? You see, Zaid, don't pick up Zaid in my vehicle. Or in that vehicle. That is yours. You could do whatever you want for that. Right? So when I give it to you, I, I sell it or what? It doesn't matter. Once you become the owner of that, that is yours. Right? So now, when. The mother what gives the daughter the jewelry, it becomes hers, right? When you give the child what? That money, it becomes his, right? The most you could do is advise him how to spend it or what to do with it, right? Any questions before we move forward? Right, so whatever money kept aside, even though what the intent is known, is known amongst the heirs, the family members, this money was kept aside for a specific purpose and that was known, that would be part of the estate. So long as it wasn't given to that individual or any given to that cause, it remained in his possession, it will constitute the estate. Understand, we would see in dividing what? In distributing the estate, it's not something hard and fast, you know, listen, if the heirs, they can mutually agree, right? The four, four, okay. You need four, four sons, they are the only heirs, right? They can decide what they want to do with it, right? What they want, some can what? Forgo their need, they can do whatever they mutually agree upon after what their right has been any allotted to them. Whatever they agree amongst themselves, they can do that, right? So if one mentioned, listen, our father was saving this money to do, to, you know, to, to donate to the masjid or to do this or that, and what, they collectively agree, then khalas, go ahead, right? If, they, if all don't agree on one, right, one, what he can do, he can take his share, right, and fulfill that, you know, that desire of his father, right? We move on now. Haram wealth. We're speaking about what the transfer, the transfer of ownership onto the heirs. Haram wealth, that person cannot own haram wealth, much less to transfer it. Alright? A person cannot own haram wealth. Alright? If a person steals something, it doesn't belong to him, shara'an, according to the sharia. Right? 
So we mentioned that in inheritance is what that divine transfer of ownership upon the demise of that person unto his heirs, right? That divine transfer. If the wealth is of haram meat, that would not what be transferred unto the heirs. Why? Because it is not in the ownership of that person, right? We mentioned what constitutes the estate, whatever that this that person what he owned in his lifetime, right? A person cannot own haram wealth. So here now we have a few case scenarios. If the entire wealth of the of the deceased, and this this probably far fetched, right? But the entire wealth, the entire estate of the deceased is from haram earnings, is what haram unlawful means, right? Then it, there's no estate here, all right? There's nothing for what the heirs, right? There's no inheritance here. That money would be taken and given to the poor, right? Not upon what the laws of inheritance for example like a person for example what he doesn't have a interest bearing in account but for, for whatever reason what he, he his what um, he, the, the account incurs somewhat interest right so what he does with it you don't give sadaqah with it yes people say it's not actually sadaqah what he does he gets rid of it right who are you going to give the same people that will receive sadaqah Understand? So you don't give sadaqa with haram wealth. You don't give sadaqa with interest money. No. You give it to the poor. Alright? You give it to the poor. <coughs> Understand? You give it to the poor to what? To get, to just get rid of it. Right? But that money is supposed to actually go back to the owners. But you cannot find the owners. Right? So like if you somebody steals some money from somebody, right? I still says haram money, so I should do with it. Give it to the poor. No, give back the money. You understand? Because you know who act, who act, who is the actual owner of it. But in a person, if he were to incur interest in his account, five, six hundred dollars interest, he doesn't know the owner, right? He cannot return this money to his right to the rightful owner. So what he would do with it, he would give it, it to the poor. All right, he would give it to the poor. So if the entire world, uh huh. A person cannot benefit from interest money. No, who's the recipient? The masjid is not a recipient of, the, of, um, of what? Of sadaqah. Right? So this is something that what? Probably, it cannot be used for what? If a person normally what? For example, donates to the masjid, right? Or gives to the masjid, gives to the arm, right? He cannot use what? Interest money for that, for that purpose. Interest money is that it, just to get rid of it. Right? It's not something, it's not a virtue, a blessing somebody going to, you know, going to, going to receive for what? Taking interest money and what? Given to the poor. No, it's something what they get rid of. Right? So a person what should not benefit no way whatsoever, right? From that money. Alright? And it should not be even used for what? They must shed. So the entire wealth is what is um yes yeah, some people say you can use it and build toilet and this and that no you can't benefit from that right you can't benefit from that because if you want to build the toilet you benefit from the toilet you use any toilet right yes it is from a public place then khalas give it for any the benefit and the the the, the, the public then a pub, pub, the benefit of the public right that is okay right but it's not something that a person what deliberately would go on in a, a deliberately would what open a fixed um, a fixed account to what incur interest so that they can take that money and give it to the poor or, or build a public what um, infrastructure no if it were to just come all right and it's then more like a person getting rid of it yet all Right. So if the entire estate is what haram, then what? There's no inheritance of that money will be given to the poor. Right? There's no inheritance there. Yes, understand here. If, right, understand here, if this person dies and this is what the situation here, this is his estate. Haram money only. But he has dependents, wife and children are dependent on that on that person, right? So they can utilize that, but that amount utilized should be any in the future be any really paid. For example, they utilize fifty thousand dollars from that money then khalas. 
Then what? In the future, make arrangement to pay back any yani, in in what to the poor sadaqa that fifty thousand dollars. Why? Because initially that fifty thousand dollars is not supposed to use it, right? But because of their desperate need and their situation, they allow to what to use it and they would repay in the future. Now, if you have part of the estate which is ha has what haram asset haram yani earnings and part halal then the, that, that what that part which is what halal and lawful that would be part of the estate right and this haram part would not be part of the estate it would be given to the poor right it would be given to the poor so the first two are very easy right the third case scenario here is what more practical the third case scenario here is where what there's a mixture of halal wealth lawful wealth and unlawful wealth right except that it is impossible to distinguish which is halal and which is haram which is lawful and which is unlawful that is difficult right so here the ulama they mention if most right if most of what in a case like this if most of the wealth all right most of the wealth is of a halal and lawful nature then the entire estate will what follow suit it will take the same ruling right and this is a scenario where what it is, a person cannot differentiate cannot yeah, distinguish between halal earnings and haram earnings this was this was purchased from halal earnings or haram earnings it's difficult right but if overall the overall what a state of that person most of it was from halal and permissible earnings then the entire estate would take that same ruling so now that a person would ask now okay what do you mean by haram earnings uh, what is meant by haram earnings? What is, is there a principle by which a person can yani, determine uh, halal earnings from haram earnings? Uh, any job or service that directly violates the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal is prohibited and thus the income and the earnings are prohibited. Alright, the income is prohibited, the earnings are prohibited. I will give some examples here. Right? For example, a man what dealing in drugs. This is the source of income, right? A drug dealer, a bar owner, right? He has a bar, a casino owner, right? All of his what? His earnings over here are uh, unlawful, right? A thief. This is what, this is a profession now, eh? I don't know, but there is a profession, thiefing, right? So his earnings, what? All of that becomes any haram. Right? Even though, listen, his intent is to what? To give to the poor. Uh, to feed his family. Understand here, a good intent doesn't change the law. Right? A good intent doesn't what change the law. It remains what? A criminal act. It remains any really a sin. Even though your intention is probably something good. Right? This man has plenty money and he has plenty what poor people in the area. All right, I'm going to, why going, he's going to what, steal that money and distribute it to what, the poor. No, khalas, that is a haram. Right? So whether he doesn't what, use it for himself, the action is haram. Right. We have bribe over here too. All right, come along. A person doing tattooing. Right, tattooing for a living. Right, even though he not what, he not tattooing what, Muslim people. Khalas, that action of tattooing, right? That is haram. So whether it be Muslim, non-Muslim, what selling movies, right? I don't feel like any halal movies. Eh? A person selling movies, whether it be what in, in whatever form they have now, right? That is what totally haram. That earnings is haram also. Certain what video games or most video games is the same ruling, right? You have music, you have nudity, and all of that. That makes it what haram, right? We have there's also what. A barber and a hairdresser, but understand here we are explain that, right? A barber and a hairdresser, right? Most of what if you look at the hadith, the Prophet والسلام, he prohibited the al qaza the shave part of the head and leaf part, right? That mentioned explicitly what in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, right? You can open a barber shop and say, listen. Are you the given halal haircut? You had to close down in a week time, right? Because after you want more than a cut here, he after one month he coming back anyhow, right? So normally what this is this is why this is prohibited because a person what 
he is compelled to what? He is compelled to what? To cut the hair in a certain way that is all prohibited. Right? And most of the hair cuts like that. Right? Most of the hair cuts like that, especially for women also. Alright? So understand that a barber in itself, a hairdresser in itself, the work is not haram. Except that what the demands of the client, what they want, khalas, it falls under that, the, those haircuts that are prohibited. Right? Now you have what? We remove bank teller, but we have bank manager. Right? Because you look at those what? Nabi alayhi salatu salam, he mentions in that riba, usury interest is what haram type. And he la'na the curse of Allah Azza wa Jal ala katibihi wa shahidai wa akiluhu wa mukiluhu. Right? Whatever is connected to that. Right? The person who is taking the interest, the one who is giving the interest, the one who is writing the transaction, the one who is witnessing, kulluhum sawa. All of them are equally sinful. Right? So that, that money becomes haram also. Right? We're not saying that every work in the bank is haram. No. If there's a, a specific type of work in the bank that doesn't entail what? Interest. Right? That person, what? He's doing security. He's doing what? Software programs, this and that, in, uh, AC, um, cameras, this and that. That has nothing to do with interest. Right? Yes, there may be a little what? There could be a level of karah and dislike because what? Being associated with such institute. Right? But generally, that would be permissible. And even though what the payment is coming from the bank, most of what the money in the bank what is permissible interest is how much 10 percent 15 percent out of 100 right so most of the money is jazz and permissible right but the problem here is what those work the work itself that entails interest even though what the money in the bank itself most of it is permissible for wages but the work itself it entails what riba interest a person that what he takes a loan he gives a loan that person writes the loan, witnesses the loan transaction, all of that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, Kullu Yanifi Sawa. Now we have what bribery. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned Arrashi wal Murtashi finnar. Arrashi wal Murtashi. That person what who gives the bribe, that person who takes the bribe, both of them are in the fire of Jahannam. Both of them. Alright? Bribery. But understand bribery. If a person, for example, because of the corrupted place that we live in, right? And the corrupted what departments that we have, especially what license like office and what? And um, immigration. immigration and all these places, right? They don't call it bribe, right? But it is bribe and khalas, whatever you want to call it, grease or whatever you want to call it, right? Right? This, listen, sometimes if you realize you can go and drive, right? Take a drive and test. And drive so good, and it would still fail you. Alright? You have to pay. They don't call it what? Bribe. But this is what? If you have to pay, right? To get your hack and your right. Alright? You cannot get your hack and your right except, except by pain. Right? Even what? You may call it a bribe, but that is not a bribe. Why? Because this is your hack and this is your right. Right? And you have been deprived of your hack. You have been deprived of your right. Right? Why is it he feeling? Right? He deliberately feels that he would pay. Right? So here now, that, that would not be considered any a bribe. I mean, you giving, that would not be considered a bribe. But that person receiving, yes. For him, the hadith of that wa'id, and that punishment would be for that person, the one who receives it. Right? Ar-Rashi wal murtashi fi nar the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salam. Right? So it doesn't mean that a person is okay, killing and robbing and if all of these things over here, once it's on sun, once it's a direct violation of the laws of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is a sin and what? The income from that is unlawful. No, but listen, this is how the corrupted, this is how the corruption is. If you don't pay, understand, if you don't pay, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not going to get a contract. Right? 
you would have you would never get a contract if you don't pay right so it's not like you the the, the that sin would be upon what the minister or upon what the man over there who making that you know that arrangement right so you can be how whatever you tend if you don't if you don't want pay that amount if you don't make arrangement they give them a, 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 a in your cut you're not going to get that contract all right But then, I mean, every situation different. Every look, I mean, looking at it in the, in the details of every contract and see, right? So then we can do it. Then. If we want to get a contract, we can then, uh, give. give. No, normally what a person you have to look at each scenario, right? Sometimes a person was not even qualified, right? Not even qualified. We have what contractors that they 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 don't even own a piece of equipment. Right? Nothing they know. Right? But they pay bribe, I mean a payment, what you want to call it, right? And they get contract and you know. So it, it depends like a person can't drive. He don't know how to drive. Right? So he's not going for driving test and this and that what he paid him money to what? For his license. Right? That is bribe. Because if you can't drive, then there's no, you don't have that 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 that, that, that right. If you cannot drive, you don't have that right to, to own a license, to possess a, a, a driver's license. Oh, we're not repeating any questions. Sorry, but that's a reminder, right? Uh-huh. Right, so that's what we say because of how the, 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 the whole thing corrupted, you have to pay, right? So you have to think about it. If you what? If you have been deprived of your hack, your rights, meanwhile they have no grounds whatsoever to what? To turn you down. They have no grounds to turn you down, right? But this is what they do it, they fail it and whatever, right? So you paying here now, you're not khalas, that is you're paying for what? You're not supposed to be paying in the first place, right? So if you have to give that now. It's not you're not taking any hack and right of anybody else. You just want your hack and your right, what is right for you. Right? So for that person what? For him who only receiving and it to be haram for him, but you now you're not bribing over there. Right? You're not bribing. Now so we mentioned as we mentioned earlier, all of what? If the, the estate it contains what well, haram wealth, right? What to do with it? But if they are heirs who are a direct dependents of the deceased, right? Little children, the wife, and they don't have wealth on their, of their own, right? And the, the, the estate over here, it, anyhow, it's not the estate anyhow, it wouldn't be part of the estate, right? But that money that, that, that is left behind, it could be utilized, right? And it's equivalent, inshallah, be given in charity at a uh, a future the date that is possible, a future time that is possible. Alright. If the deceased has what a, a he deposited his money in what a, an interest bearing account, right? He has an interest bearing account, then when he passes away, then that only that principal amount that he has in the account, that will be part of the estate. The extra the interest amount will be given out, right? Will be distributed. Right, so now we have debt benefits, right? So debt benefits, we have all these what? Insurance scheme, pension scheme, this scheme, that scheme, medical scheme. So you have two types of what? Two types of what? Schemes here, one is a voluntary one, you yourself what? Volunteer, right? In the sense that it was not mandatory, right? From the government or the company that you're working with. You yourself, what? Khalas, enter any a pension scheme, a medical scheme, or whatever, right? And you voluntarily every month, any, you give what? Premium every month, right? So if a person, what? If a person, what, or what? Well, before we mention, right? Generally, all conventional type insurance, any, mentioned by the ulama, all conventional type of insurance mentioned by the ulama in haram because of the elements of riba, the elements of what gambling, 
the elements of it in Kharara and uncertainty. Alright? Nevertheless, a person what enters one of these schemes over here, right? These are pension scheme or medical whatever, and he voluntarily contributes. He voluntarily every month he what he contributes, right? So for that person now, when he dies, that amount that he contributes, right, that would be what? Part of the estate. The excess that would be given upon death, right? The excess that would be given any upon his demise. Right? That would not be part of the estate. That would be given to the poor. Right? It would be given to the poor. Right. So remember you have two types of what? Insurance. You have that one where you voluntarily pay. Right? It's not from the government, not from the company. It's not like the take from your salary. Right? Yeah, you pay, you pay what? Voluntarily. Every month you, you pay what? A premium every month. 200, 250, whatever the case may be. You pay that voluntarily. Right? So upon what? The demise of that person, the company or the government would what? Would, would what? Would what? Compensate with a, a lump sum. Right? So the law here is not that what they said, only that amount that you want, that you pay that what that is that would go to your estate. Right? The excess now that would be what? That would be interest. Right? The excess would be interest and that would not be part of the estate. That would be this given to the poor. Right? It would be given to the poor. As you mentioned, if the children they are what in need, right? They are poor. When you say give it to the poor, then what? The first set of poor people is what? The, that is more worthy is what? The children. But that would not be part of inheritance. Right? That would not be part of inheritance. That should be what? Uh, given to get rid of it. Right? Just like you would incur what? Uh, the interest that you would incur in your bank account. Khalas. Just get rid of it. Right? So now you have the mandatory type. Right? This is where what? The mandatory type. That is just taken from your salary, whether it be from the government or from the company that you work in, right? It's just taken mandatory without halal. It's already cut. Yeah. So it's just like something like, like, like yeah, like NIS, right? So here now there are three views, right? I tend to choose which one, but listen, there are three views. Understand? Why three views? The first view is that was not part of the estate. Remember, we mentioned earlier what comprises the estate. What did he see? So what he owned in his lifetime until his last breath. This money he never owned. This money, right? He never owned that. If something was taken, taken from your class, you don't own that. Yes, the one that you give what voluntarily is like a khala. This is a deposit in your account, right? That is yours, right? But that mandatory type now. The first view is that what that is not part of the estate right that is not part of the estate then who benefits from that whoever is the beneficiary right and that will be considered a gift from the company or from the government right because that wasn't the possession of that person in his lifetime no he had access to it right so it will not be part of the estate right that is one view the second view is that what the entirety will be part of the estate Right? The entire amount will be part of the estate, meaning what? how much he contributed plus the, the surplus that was given upon his demise. The entire amount will be part of the estate. Alright? What do you mean? You have to explain that type of insurance. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You mean before what? Before that is what? When the lifetime of a person? Uh huh. Yeah, what I'm saying, but normally what the lump sum would be given after demise. While you're alive, they get the lump sum. Right. Right, so the same concept would, would you check the amount that you pay, right? Remember, the excess is what? 
If you give somebody ten thousand dollars what, and, and with the condition that they give you back fifteen thousand dollars, the extra five is what? Interest, right? The extra five is interest. So that surplus, if as I mentioned, if it what the maturity date reaches and you cash it in, then you only allowed to collect that amount that you paid, right? The value, the, um, the premiums that you paid. Check it up and see how much it is. That is yours, right? And the excess that would be, halas, you get rid of that. All right. So you go to the third view here on the mandatory insurance. The third view is that what? That amount of that was taken, all right? My maiden didn't voluntarily give. That amount that was taken, my maiden taken from your pay, your salary. So that amount that was taken, that would be part of the estate. And the excess now, the surplus, right? It would go to what? Whoever is the beneficiary. Right? It will go to whoever is the beneficiary. Right, so the three views again, this is, this is mandatory type, right? Mandatory type, any insurance, right? Medical plan, pension plan, whatever, right? This, uh, here we speak now about upon demise, right? Upon demise, this, this is about inheritance. Otherwise, in the lifetime of a person, it becomes mature, has not to be inheritance, right? Inheritance is what? After demise. And after demise now, the lump sum comes in, all right? So the first view is that what? It's not part of the estate. I we mentioned why the second view what? The entire thing is part of the estate. And the third view, which is what? The view that I would prefer, right? That amount that was taken from the estate, taken from what? The salary of that person, that amount would constitute the estate. And the surplus, it would go to whoever is the beneficiary and it will be considered a gift or a grant from the government or the company. Given you what the insurance itself, I mean the, the, the interest itself. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. You see what? In, in a, a unit trust, right? What happened? What if you put ten thousand dollars, right? What they do? They what? They invest the money, right? It's not like okay, ten thousand, they get interest from it, right? Your ten thousand, whoever deposited that ten thousand, the company would what? Invest that money, right? Invest that money, and this is what the return they're going to get, and they after they distribute it, right? After a period of time, what are you going to get? What this amount? So in that case, when you check and see, okay, how they what? How they what? They invested that money. Right? If it was real estate, they invested in what they buying this, buying that. So once the investment is what? Is permissible, is halal, then halal, everything becomes any permissible. But if the investment now is not permissible, they, they, they deal in what? Say what? Alcohol, right? They invest in what? This company that, that is not permissible, then that, then how you call it? That, um, that return would not be permissible. Right? The return would not be permissible. They accept that what? The initial investment. That would be, that would be permissible, right? The initial investment of ten thousand dollars that would be permissible, right? But the, 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 the how you call it, the profits or whatever gain from that, if the investment is not a halal investment, then what? The returns would not be um, would not be permissible, right? But still, yes, it doesn't answer the question, right? The question is what? Listen, if somebody has haram earnings, then non-Muslim, right? Then what? And they give it to me as a gift for this and that is, it is allowed for me to what partake from it, right? So here on the ulama they mention what if we know for sure, right, that what that money is haram, right? Somebody went and steal that money and they give it to you and you know that is haram money, right? You're not allowed to take that, right? You're not allowed to take that. Secondly, if a person what his what wealth, his earnings is mixed with what halal and haram. Right? He works what? Yes, he works in a bank, but he has a, a how you call it, a, a, a shop. He has, he has a construction um, company he runs, or this and what, multiple jobs there, right? So if what? 
most of his earnings, right? Even though he has haram earnings, but most of his earnings are what? A lawful land, right? The entire amount will be considered lawful, right? The entire amount. Even though they are what? Unlawful any income, he has unlawful income, but what? Most of his income is what from? Lawful means that what? You can eat from that person and you know, that's another issue. But if you know that, that, that this person, his what? All of his earnings is haram, totally haram. Haram, then you're not supposed, you shouldn't what? Accept a gift from that person, nor you should eat from that person. Right? That is one view and that is the most um, precautious view. Right? Other scholars, right? They of the opinion that what? Listen, that prohibition is for that person himself, not for you. Right? It becomes haram for him, right? But not for you. You understand? And sometimes, listen, you can apply that in what? In, in, in places of necessity. For example, listen, you went to install a EC for a man, right? And he taking money that what? He just went from what? The lotto or whatever, and he give it to you. No, no, I don't want that money. We'll go up the road, right? That's your hack. I mean, that's your right, right? Otherwise, what? So in a case like that, no khalas. You know, you adopt that view. But to go and eat and drink and ask that, you know, there's no, there no need over there, right? Because you can't tell the person exactly, listen, I don't want from that money. I want from this money, right? So here, you now these khalas were mentioned, you need ad-darahim la tata'ayyan bita'ayyin. Khalas, they have a, a principle that says, listen, Money is not specified by specification, right? So meaning what? Even though this is a three hundred dollars someone, the lotto machine he, he got from gambling, right? This would not be considered the meaning what? It would not be specified then, right? Once he had three hundred, that three hundred could come from will be concerned from his overall wealth then, and not specifically from this. For example, they go to a shop, right? And this item is what a hundred dollars, right? So you tell the person, listen. I'm going to pay you this hundred dollars. You see this hundred dollars? I'm going to pay you this hundred for that item. And he agrees, right? So, transaction finished. You know you want liberty to give him a next one. You can what? Give him a different one. Or you can give him five twenties. Or you can give him ten tens. Or give him a hundred singles, right? He can't say this is that hundred dollars is what specified it's not specified what is specified the item is specified he can't change the item he can't say okay i'll give you a next one no no the item is specified the specification it doesn't work for what the money you can change that right so in a case that even though what he take that 300 from me what the play or whatever right it will still be allowed right because most of his money is what permissible right and even what Say, just for argument's sake, most of his money is not permissible, right? So what are you going to do? You have to get your hack, your right, right? The man owe you what? $500, $1,000, right? So apply that other rule in then, right? It is, it is haram for him, prohibited for him, not for you, right? Then the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he mentioned, لَهَا صَدَقَ وَلَنَا هَدِيَّةً the Prophet ﷺ, he is prohibited from what? Consuming sadaqah. Right? So some sadaqah was sent to the, um, to the house of the Prophet ﷺ, right? And he gave it to what? A particular individual. That individual what? Cooked it or, you know, took possession of it, cooked it. And send some for the Prophet. ﷺ. So now Aisha mentioned that is what Sadaqa? No, no. He said no. Laha Sadaqa. For her is what Sadaqa. Lana Hadiya. Because the change of the, the changing of hand now, the change of ownership, it changes the ruling. Right? It changes the ruling. Right? So that same interest money, right? For you is that is interest money. So you have to get rid of it, right? But when they give it to somebody else, give it to the poor, it's not interest for him. Right? With the change of ownership here, it's not interest anymore. Right? It's not, it's not interest anymore. This is a khalas. 
This is zakam, you can use the zakam, right? You give it to what? Some khala. For him, it's not zakah, it's normal money. Right? So when that... Uh -huh. No. No, he's speaking about what the non-Muslim family. Right? Understand? Long ago, not like the books are fake. Right? They mentioned what? If what a non-Muslim what did this, a non-Muslim what drank alcohol, consumed pork, and this, that, we don't look at that time again. We are to say a person. Right? Right? Because that is the action, yes, it's not part of Islam, but we have many Muslim people what they indulge in that. Right? So normally what? We say, okay, um, a man and a khalas, most in the books of fiqh, you'll see what? The word in use, in your husband and a wife, a man has what relation with his wife, this would, this would have, you know, this is the rule, and that is the rule, and the host or whatever, right? That's supposed to be normal, but now you have to see a man and a woman, right? So anyhow, we'll go back over here, the laws of inheritance with regard to NIS, right? As you mentioned, NIS, right? This is a, a mandatory um, scheme here, right? So you have what retirement grants, pension grants, and benefit. Whatever is received by the policy holder in his lifetime has nothing to do with inheritance. That is his. Right? Whatever is received, whether a grant or whatever, right? That is his, is a gift, right? It has nothing to do with inheritance. Unless it remains in his prop in his possession until he dies. Right? So whatever they have, injury allowance, any medical expenditure, disability grant, uh, pension, whatever. Right? But now if the policy holder were to die. Right? If that person were to die and the insurance company now the NIS because of what? The, the demise of the policyholder, the you know the certain um, family members and beneficiaries they receive grants. Right? Whether it be what? A one time grant or a perpetual grant, like the widow's grant is not something perpetual, right? Or a one time thing, funeral grant or whatever, or what, all right? All of that now, that has nothing to do with what? How you call it? That has nothing to do with what? The estate. Right? So if the, if the what? After the demise now, they give what? A widower's grant. Hey, it dies for her. Khalas. That belongs to what? The wife and that is what? The, not by virtue of inheritance. No, that is a gift or a grant given to the, given to the what? The, the wife by the company or by the government. Right? So whoever after demise, whoever name is in the, as, whoever is as a, listed as a beneficiary, it would go to them. Right? Not part of it, not part of the estate, not part of inheritance. Right. So, so we speak about what the transfer of ownership upon demise, right? Inheritance occurs after demise. It is not possible that a person would share his inheritance in his lifetime, as you mentioned. Even though you ask, listen, I have what, three children, two boys, one girl, this, that, that I want to share my, my, my wealth according to the laws of inheritance. So even though you have to adapt what, the shares of inheritance and share in your lifetime, it will not be inheritance. Inheritance only occurs after death, right? Inheritance only occurs any after death. So a person says, you know what? He, just, he, what? he shares all of his wealth in his lifetime. That is not inheritance. And when he dies, the inheritance will come in. But I don't have anything. You, share class. you have on your clothes, you have on your shoes, you have whoever. Right? That is still part of the estate. All right? So whatever remains in his, in his property after gifting, donating, granting, whatever you want to call it, that becomes part of the estate. So the debt must be certain, right? That man what? He gonna die just now, you know? Yeah, he look like he got dead, watch, watch. He got dead any time. No, khalas, only when he dies, you gonna get inheritance. Then if the, what, the laws of inheritance would come in. The person what? Life support. The man still, you know, he ain't dead yet, all right? This man in prison for life. Best is share his property one time. No, he not what? He's still alive, right? He's still alive. Right, so you can't what? You can't share hey, what, this person's estate while he's alive. Right, that must be certain. Right. 
What about simultaneous death? And for example, a vehicular accident, two people what? Two heirs, they die at the same time, husband and wife, father and son, right? They die at the same time. So now who would inherit from who? Right? According to what the state law, the law of the land, it based on what? Seniority. Right? Automatically. In the sense that, listen, if two a uh, husband and wife what they die in a vehicle accident right and it cannot be determined who died first and who died second right then would the law of the land would come in and listen the elder they will what would be it will be a presume or assume that what the elder one died first and thus what the other one inherit right but according to the laws of sharia it doesn't work so that death, it must be certain. You don't, you don't inherit and walk by what? Doubt. It must be certain, right? So if you're not certain that what? The husband died first, right? Or you're not certain that the wife died first, then none would inherit from the other, right? And then a person would say, well, listen, so at the end of the day, both of them dead anyhow. I mean, both of them died. So who, where is the sense of inheritance? Understand, listen. It means that what? If it is proven that the husband died first, what does that mean? His, the wife would inherit from him. Right? The wife would inherit from what? The estate of the husband, either one eighth or one quarter of the estate. Now that share now will be passed on to her surviving heirs. Right? This is what is, is meant here. Right? So if it is proven that the husband died first, then one eighth or one quarter will go to the wife. When she dies now, right her estate will go to her surviving heirs plus the one quarter one in what she she what she inherited from the estate of the husband and if it's proven that listen the wife died first right and then the husband a few moments afterwards now what's going to happen the husband is entitled to either one quarter one one half of the estate of the wife so if that is proven that when the wife died first then what he would be entitled to a half of an estate or one quarter of the estate based on what? The condition that we'll explain later on, inshallah. Right? And now when he dies, his surviving heir would inherit what? From his estate and his estate would also come. How his estate and his estate would what comprise of? A quarter or a half from the estate of his wife. Right? So this is how it works. But if you can't prove who died first in that accident, then none would inherit from the other, right? What will happen? Their surviving heirs would inherit from what? These people, right? The heirs of what? The, hus the husband would inherit from his estate. The heirs of the wife would inherit from her estate. And yes, you're going to get what? You're going to get certain heirs that inherit from both, right? Now the estate of her? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's tell me. We normally will just go on to um, we just We just have a few slides remaining, right? We have a five minutes again? Yeah. Good. Right, the estate of a fetus, right? A child in the womb of the mother, right? The estate, and some estate connected to what ownership, right? Understand? A child in the womb of the mother cannot own property. For example, say, listen. I, I donate or I give $10,000 to my grandchild who is in the womb of what? His mother. No, that child cannot what? Uh, cannot own property, right? So if this was what? Gifted, there's no transfer of ownership there. There's no transfer of ownership. But if the child has upon birth, right? He gives that child ten thousand dollars and what? It's kept by the guardian. Right? He could be the guardian also, right? He could be what the, the, the trustee, right? Yes, ownership would, would be transferred to that child, right? So the child cannot own anything, right? In the womb of the mother, only upon birth, that that what the transfer of ownership would take place, as opposed to what inheritance and wasia right that child in the womb of the mother and the son is entitled is entitled to inheritance 
right? For example, that what? If it's a, a boy or a girl, that's what she, he or she is entitled to that share, right? Whatever the share may be, he or she has the right to that share. And only if that child was born alive, khalas, would the ownership be transferred. If that child, that child was born, what? Dead. Miscarriage. Khalas, there's no ownership there. Alright? The moment, khalas, the child, what? Born alive. The child may not, what? May not live afterwards. But the moment that, what? That child is, what? Born alive. And how we know the child born alive? The child may cry. You see movement. You see signs of life in that child. Right? And the son in inheritance, the son is king in inheritance. So if it's a son, right, a boy, and that child was born alive, then that his share will be transferred to him. Right? And if not that child were to die after a few moments, right? A few days or a few moments, or after a moment, right, then his share will be transferred to his heirs. And his heirs will be what? What whoever his mother, right, father, right, like that. So the estate of a fetus, the child doesn't own anything. A fetus doesn't own anything, right? Ownership would not be established upon any boot, right? With regards to inheritance, right? On the son here, on the son the difference here. If the grandfather, if the father say, listen, I give that child a hundred thousand dollars, and I become the trustee and what the guardian over that, right? It doesn't take place at that time, nor at the time of birth. No, it doesn't take place. Ownership doesn't transfer, right? At the time of birth, if he what he says that he does that, yes, it's going to be transferred. As opposed to inheritance, inheritance, okay, that child is what while in the womb of the mother is entitled to that, right? That entitlement is there, and that child would what that trans that that ownership would transfer the moment that child born is born, any alive. Type, whether they what inheritance or what's here. So is there like a specific time, a specific age of the fetus for it to be Once what? It could be proven that, that the pregnancy occurred before what? Obviously the pregnancy can occur after what? After demise. Something wrong. Right? So once the pregnancy is there what? At the time of what? Before demise then. Right? And Khala, that child will be entitled to inheritance. So, like, let's say, the baby was conceived before we were in away. Uh, and the father passed away. And after the baby uh, passed away, then the wife became aware of him she was pregnant. Right. So, according to what? Any, according to what the Hanafi Madhab, any act of the Muddat al-Hamal is... Two what? Two years. Right? The longest what? Gestation period is what? Two years. Right? So khalas, that woman until what? If she what? Within that two years, right? The child comes. Within that two year period, it will be attributed, the paternity will be attributed to the father. Right? And he would be, a, a, he would, that child would be what? A legitimate heir. Unless the woman khalas, at some time she mentioned, listen, it that come to an end, this and that and whatever, Right? And she what? She mentioned otherwise. But khalas, if that child comes within that time, then it would be attributed to the, to the father. Alright? Now you have the estate of an apostate. Right? We just close up with this one. The estate of, a, of a, yani an apostate. I mean, I would deep into the rules of any apostasy, right? And not, not this class, right? If a person is an apostate, and the fuqaha, they mention, the ulama, they mention that that amount of wealth that the person accumulated, he owned, that was in his possession, before irtidad, before becoming apostate, that would be part of his estate and his what Muslim is, they would inherit. That amount of what? Wealth, that was earned after becoming an apostate and khalas is not part of the estate. It's not part of the estate. Now, if that person who became an apostate 
he reverted to Islam. He reverted to what? Islam. Then all of his wealth would be part of the estate. That which he earned before apostasy. Right? And that which he owed during what? The period of Yeni. Apostasy. And afterwards also. Why? Because he reverted back to Islam. So all of that wealth would be part of the estate. As for a woman, if she commits apostasy, then her entire wealth would be part of the estate. Without any distinction before and after. Alright? As for a missing heir, and we close off with the missing heir, right? A missing heir, his property would not be distributed unless it is proven that the man dead. We know this man, he's gone a long time, you know he is, right? So you start showing up the man property. No. It must be proven, and they have ways to prove, right? It must be proven that this person is what? Dead. And once that is proven, then his estate could be what? Distributed. This is for what? The owner of the estate. As for an heir, this person is an heir, legitimate heir. Right? And this is his share of inheritance, but he's missing. Right? His whereabout is not known. So that person now, his share will be kept aside. Eh? He's going to share it on that. Oh, he, he dead. No. That is kept aside. Right? His amount, his portion is kept aside. Until when? Until it is proven that he is actually dead. So his share that is kept aside now will be redistributed amongst the heirs. Right? Like nowadays when people go in missing and they never find them. That will be kept indefinitely. No, you have a right a good question, right? They have ways, okay. Like in Islamic State the after investigating, the Kaldi could pronounce or Khalas, he pro may give a pronouncement that this person is what? Dead. Right? We don't have that here, right? And the Hanafi Madhab, like that question he asked, right? The Hanafi Madhab is a bit, some, it might be a little difficult in this, in this ruling. That is why many of our ulama, they adopt the, 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 the Maliki view. In the Hanafi Madhab, as he mentioned, no whereabouts of this person and there's no proof and evidence that he died. Right? So the original view in the Madhab is that, listen, you look at that person, right? That person, look at his, um, his siblings or the, the people around what? His age. Right? If all of them died, then khalas, he, most likely what? He also dead. And they should be at what? And this is how the inheritance would go. Right? So you look at what? His Akran then, people of his same age. Right? If they what? They're still alive, there's a possibility where he's still alive. If they all died, then what? Possibly that would kill us. So that could go what? 70, 80, 90 years like that. Right? So the Hanak, the what? The, the view is what? The Maliki views that well as they investigate thoroughly, right? And after investigation, there's no way about it, that person, nowhere to be found, this and that, right? Four months after that, he'll be considered dead, right? But let's say if a dead man come back, uh, that's, that would be what? You can't say that, listen, there's no yard, that, that would be his still, right? See, that's what he will have that choice. You could what? This own that child as your child. Right? And understand inheritance. A person what? Becomes an heir because of what? One or two factors. Right? Factors that for inheritance is what? The condition for inheritance. Either what? Blood or a spouse. Right? Blood or a spouse. And this has nothing to do with okay. Treatment and kindness and love and this and that. No, once he is your son, right? Entitled inheritance. But this man never he would never come and see his father. Never took care of his father. This and that and man call over the father. Then you could say what? That is your son. He entitled to inheritance. He will inherit one more than everybody to anyhow. 
So in your lifetime, yes, you can give who you want to give. Right? But when you die, when a person dies now, the laws of inheritance will take precedence. Right? And his son, Khalas, he's king in inheritance. Right? He would understand his son, he would say, he would eliminate all his siblings. Right? So all your brothers and sisters, what? That son would eliminate. All the aunties and uncles, that son would eliminate. All the grandchildren, that son would eliminate. Right? So that is what? The son in inheritance. He's the king in inheritance. Right? No, that's different. Right? The son was the father. We're going to, we're going to uh, discuss in the next upcoming um, session, inshallah. Impediments, right? Impediments to inheritance. What that, those things that will what? Prevent a person from inheriting, even though he may be an heir. Right? What would, what would those things that would disqualify that person from inheriting? Right? So we have things that would disqualify a person from inheriting and one is what? Uh, a person being a non-Muslim. Right? A non-Muslim cannot inherit from a Muslim and vice versa. Right? Understand there's a difference between inheritance and wasiya and a will. We discuss, we, inshallah, we discuss that difference. They can get a will, a wasiya, right? They could, they, a non-Muslim could what? Can benefit from the estate by any a will or a wasiya, but not by inheritance. Inshallah, we explain all of that in the upcoming session. Inshallah, time. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.